available for ordering and now enjoy our next talk. It's a little more tough of a topic, I would say. So it's about people who have a uterus, because for them it isn't always easy to be self-determined about their own bodies. That's because of uh, lacks of research time uh, sometimes, but also about lacks of accessibility. And it's not self-evident that uh, in gynecological practices you're, um, you can feel welcome and this is why um, our authors have published a book on gynecological self-determination. Hi, my, is, my name is Lena and I'm here with three other Ginformans and we will talk about our collective and our activism. I will show you our website to introduce the concept. This is our website. It's called ginformation.de. And it's about low threshold information on gynecological treatments that can be filtered by different categories. And what is behind us is essentially a database of recommendations we receive from users about positive experience they have made in their gynecological practices and with gynecologists. And this is how you make recommendations. You can press this button, which says recommend, and you can fill in a poll that asks for certain data on the practitioners, but um, there are also um, poll points about accessibility, about the quality of treatment, the content um, of the treatment, and different other aspects. But um, users are also asked to attribute themselves to certain groups. For example, people with disabilities, non-binary people, etc. And our website reads in the poll and creates profile that you can profiles that you can search and that you can also filter for um, different categories. For example, if I'm asexual and want a practitioner that is especially aware about that topic, or um, you can add another category such as experience with sexualized violence, and then you can also look for um, treatments. For example, in this example, uh, birth childbirth and uh, then yeah that's it you get your result and that's uh, what the website is about our concerns are um, the right to self-information, enabling self-information, information about abortions, for example, is a very critical topic in Germany, but also um, treatment that is free of discrimination. And it's about the perspective of the patient that they have a right to quality treatment. Lisa is our expert on legal questions. And she's been active in the group since its foundation in 2019. 
And we've been online since March 2020, by the way. And Lisa, maybe you can tell us about what differentiates us from other recommendation platforms like Yameda, for example. Yeah, this is one of the big questions that we asked ourselves in the beginning at the foundation because of course there is the risk of being sued if you do a website like that as a of as an as an association so we didn't uh, we wanted to minimize our own risks but there are differentiating, differentiating categories. We decided that we do not do negative recommendations. We only have positive experiences on our websites. Internally, there is the possibility to give feedback about bad experiences and we will verify and process that, but we will not post it online on the website because that could get us into trouble, legal trouble. And the second big difference is that Yameda offers doctors premium profiles for money, of course, where you can add a picture and you can get ranked higher and stuff like that. And of course, we don't have that. We offer objective filtering categories. There's no way to rank yourself up financially, so um, that differentiates us as well. Yeah, from my perspective also, we want to provide quick and secure access to dis uh, anti-discriminatory treatment because for people who are looking for good treatment it's we don't want that they have to sift through all kinds of recommendation websites before they find valuable results and we hope to help here and yeah, that is also why we founded this association because of political contexts and certain problems that we are reacting to. And uh, Lisa was also the one who, whose idea was um, very important in our foundation. And she's also done a lot of the press work. I think many of those who are watching have made the experience that you often find negative experiences with gynecologists and Many people are wondering how they can find a good practice and often um, you use oral recommendations from friends or family and with our database we don't just want to react to negative ratings on the internet but also a political climate. Often people aren't aware of their rights and don't have the terminology or the, um, the knowledge, specific knowledge. So, dann kann auch eine gute Behandlung gelingen. Was momentan der Fall ist, gerade in der Gynäkologie, 
ist at the moment, Geschlecht weiterhin binär gedacht wird. Sex ähm, is often thought of as a binary thing in, in the medical context. And there is a lot of stigmatization of people such as trans individuals and also sex workers in gynecology. Medicine or me medical science has a lot of problem with discrimination that results in real life health issues. We have lack of accessibility for wheelchair users or P um, blind people. We have ableism at doctor's offices and also in gynecology, sexualized violence is a topic where we need more awareness. Also sexual shaming happens in gynecological offices. It can also become physical. That's a long list, unfortunately. So this is why we found that the, our collective so that we can make a positive difference with positive recommendations and ratings. Where, as I said, we work from the perspective of patients and our collective only includes people who have made first-hand experiences with gynecologists, some of whom have medical knowledge, but none of whom are actively treating patients themselves. And Christina is our expert on data security and privacy, and she's also active in other collectives. But I would like to ask you, Christina, why is it so important that this collective is only made up of people who have made gynecological experiences themselves and who have experienced the perspective of the patient? in der Programmierung oder sonst wo ähm, Menschen, die diese Erfahrung nicht mitbringen. Und ähm, vielleicht kannst du dazu was sagen. Genau. Also uns ist es allen im Kollektiv ziemlich wichtig, dass... It is very important to all of us in the collective that we live our principles in all aspects. And that concerns technology and data protection as well. The whole concept of our collective is focused on the perspective of the patients, because that is the core, at the core of the information. It's not just thought to be a tool or a database, but it's thought as a community effort and community knowledge and our ways of communication and connections are ever developing and ever growing. And it's also very important to us that this is reflected in the technological aspects and that we incorporate those perspectives already in planning. Since we launched our project, I think we've made a lot of progress based on feedback, which we incorporated. And I think that this really enhances our platform and I hope that it will benefit us so that uh, we can reach even more people and help them. Yes, I think that is an important point that you have just mentioned, Christina, because there isn't just the website that we play with, but several other channels that we use to reach the community and where our net activism, as it were, is being played out. So maybe you could say something about the role that has in our work 
what Christina also mentioned. So maybe you can talk about that, Angelina. Yes, I think it's very important what you're saying there, Christina. We have a lot of knowledge that we gain from various groups that maybe have been fighting a long time before us for a change in healthcare and medical care. And there is a long history there of queer, trans feminist movements, anti racist move, anti racist movements. And the service that we are offering with this list, of course, builds very much on this collective knowledge. It's important to stress that many collectives come about or <laughs> come into bloom, I would say. For example, Red High Heel Shoe, uh, Roter Stöcke Shoe, or Selbststimmt Steril. There are lists by trans people recommending practitioners to each other. And for the gynecological area, we would like to learn from the feedback that we have gained there. And we have, we actually used forms a lot before we went into a better phase. We had about 50 experts with various backgrounds and asked them for feedback, which aspects we may have overlooked. What maybe we were thinking wrong. That was an important part of our work. And networking with these other collectives is really starting up now. And I think each one of us is learning a lot there. And the important thing, I think, is that there is no defensive that at, if at some point we will receive some criticism, you may have forgotten this group or erased someone we may hear. So we don't want to de react defensively to that, but actually thank these people for giving this knowledge to us. And we try to react. So we don't want to have someone looking after the technology, the website or the press work to, that, that we really have to explain it to. So. We want this knowledge to really enable our work. We don't go to every gynecologist in Germany and test whether they are cool or not. We are relying on collective knowledge. And yes, I would like to add to that. I thought it was really good that from the from the beginning, when we were in the patient perspective, we were very much aware that our collective could not cover all perspectives. So we needed the feedback, and we are very grateful for that. And it's a necessary part of our work. We value this very much, and we continue to value that. It's a continuous pro process. Yes, exactly. That is something I wanted to say, too. <laughs> And what I said at the beginning about social media being important to us, they are an important tool for reaching out and starting an exchange because the website as such does not have interactive features. What we also have next to the actual search function is a blog where articles are published on topics such as gynecological, gynecological self-determination and there are resources on a separate page on abortions, how they how they happen. There is a manifest that we wrote. So we try to collect or start a collection of knowledge for the long term of what we've learned through the exchanges. But of course, much of that exchange happens in social media channels. So that is, of course, an active part of our work too. Now, this practical experience that is created through exchange and this DIY principle that we have it carries over to a field that we don't know so well and don't have so much expertise about. Um, so we are learning. So we, we haven't had any training, so we are gathering experience. And that carries over to the work within the collective. 
In terms of active participants, we are fairly large, about 12 uh, are more or less active. And Christina, maybe you can talk a little about the way we empower each other as the collective through exchange and yeah. the expertise we gain. Yes, I do think that this is one of the strengths of this collective, that we are, that we bring so many different fields of experience and not just empower each other, but actually enrich each other's knowledge. We have questions that each one of us may bring not just knowledge, and various perspectives. And as you've mentioned, in the collective, we have people with the, who are in the medical field, and some are more in the communicative area, and some in the legal area. So these perspectives come together, and they are all important for the collective. And this networks in a way that a fantastic kind of concert is created and we have been really able to supplement each other very well. And of course, we follow the same principles and that means that we don't just stay within our own opinions and expertise, but we network to search for new perspectives and develop the project further. As you said, it's not a static thing. There are various processes, and the feedback process is a very important one there. If we get feedback, we really value that and not regard it as destructive criticism. So every feedback we get, we can take a lot out of. And sometimes we really are so grateful about the open attitude with which people react and, and in which they help us develop the platform further. And maybe from my own perspective, I could just butt in and say that regarding the way that programming, technology, privacy, email encryption and all that is handled, I actually, I don't really come from that area, but I find it very empowering to have people that are ready to run a small workshop for us, a crypto party, perhaps, and we're not just getting knowledge about gynecology, our body bodies or as our, on our rights as patients, but also knowledge about tools which we can use for activist work. Uh, so there is a further empowerment process there, also concerning people that have a legal perspective. So that gives me the security that uh, I have a good basis on which I can speak and act. So that is a very imp important process again from you and everyone else, the expand, extended community. We all learn from that, from all that, and not just within our own collective, but also with the other collectives that are in the same process. And that is so interesting, particularly in times of Corona, if you think about activism there and accessibility of resources and the networking that maybe uses online media uh, much more. Yes, exactly. That is extremely enriching and we organize as a collective in working groups that take on various tasks, but as you've just said, they have run workshops. So we give workshops to each other on sensitive language or mindful language, so we can actually gain these bits of information and knowledge, which makes it very interesting. And Lisa, you told me that through the work you have become aware of issues in the legal field about equal treatment within gynecological uh, treatment 
And maybe you can talk about that a little. You have been muted. Sorry, I was listening so intently. Yes, thanks for the question. Uh, I would say that there is a general trend in the legal sciences uh, regarding the relationship between practitioner and patient. There are more information obligations now, but at the same time there are aspects that have been disregarded completely. For example, I don't want to go into too much, into too much detail, but there is a law for equality that says that services should be offered to all people, and if someone doesn't do that, uh, then legally there is the question whether that is discrimination. And this is very important in industrial relationships, labor relationships, but strangely it's not used a lot in the practitioner-patient relationship, which means that certain patients will not be treated by gynecologists. So that is a question that in your law studies simply doesn't come up. And the mainstream legal science doesn't deal with that. And I recognize in work that some much of the literature is written by cis men, generated by cis men, who disregard these topics entirely, or if they deal with them, well, they just have shitty attitudes, I have to put it that way. And actually, I think these are against the Constitution as such. But yeah. So these are questions that are important and that within our working groups we have an exchange about. And I think that is so enriching. I, it, this is really great. Yes. That to me is very important too, how this diversity really is important to us. It's not just a nice thing to have different perspectives, but really extremely important to find solutions. And the feeling that I think for the first time I had in this collective to really be taken seriously with these problems and that these problems are something that we have to work on. Absolutely. It is well known that research on various symptoms that happen occur in, in this area is not as active as research in other areas, so that abortions are not taught in medical training. So this really is a structural problem, and we are just a small drop in the ocean there, but um, I think we can give incentives to look at certain issues. We maybe work to make things more visible, but we also look for pragmatical solutions, pr pragmatic solutions that may get you to a good point, even if the structural problems persist. That gets me towards the end, but I would like to ask around what you wish for for the future from a project like this and what the topics are that you would like to look at and that may be uh, feel very tough and, and large for you at the moment. So what can be done now with us in the future? Who wants to say something to that? I can start. Sorry. I would say there is a lot of potential still for improvement. As you said before, I would wish for medical training to change in a way that not just that the cis male isn't the perceived normal 
diesen ganzen Fragen auch beschäftigt und auch die Frage, and that instead discriminatory experiences are brought to the table and you, there's um, training and discussion about how you can prevent them and also the potential for errors in diagnostics need to be addressed because certain symptoms and are often overlooked and that needs to become a topic in education as well. Maybe you could say something about the um, topics within the collective? Of course, there are different plans. One plan that we're concretely working on is to get into contact with gynecologists more and um, that we use the knowledge that we get from this project to make concrete improvements and approach people with easy to do that would help us as patients. And I also dream of a better networking that we can also apply our best practices from information to other topics and areas. For example, in uh, therapy, I could imagine, or even for general practitioners, practitioners, uh, we could copy paste some of the strategies. But of course, we would need more networks and new people in order to do that, and we would also love more reach. In die Suche nach der richtigen Behandlerin auch so that more people auch use Zeit, our service und sowas erreichen können. and um, also to be found in search engines. And also paragraph um, 218 and 219 in uh, the German uh, basic law need to be gotten rid of. Yeah, Christina, last words from you? And I don't have any additions. I'm just very happy and very blessed to be working with you girls. And let's continue our good practices. Yeah, that's it from our presentation and see you in Q&A in a minute. No sound again from Julia. So again, unfortunately, there is no sound, so nothing to interpret at the moment. I should get into lip reading. The sound is back on. At the moment, we're only working in Germany, but in all states. So, um, of course, unfortunately, as we depend on collaboration from people, our reach is a bit patchy. So, um, we don't have 
that much coverage in some of the states. And it would also be difficult for us to cover the whole German-speaking countries because, uh, yeah, we're a bit too busy for that at the moment. And maybe that goes in, into Lisa's topic, but there are differences regarding legal foundations, um, regarding data protection and also abortion. But there are similar projects in France, in French Switzerland, and in Austria we also have QueerMed, which is a similar portal for um, medical practices. So there are similar projects in other countries. You were talking about the resource question. Many people are really thankful for that, but there are people who would like to support you. So the question goes out, how can we support you? There are different approaches. We have a blog, which we mentioned on our website, where you can read more in-depth articles. And we're always looking for contributors who want to write articles that we can publish. And our core collective has a relatively fixed stru structure already but there is an email address which you can use to contact us and then we can see how you could support us. And also sharing is caring. Even if you don't have the capacity to work in the collective, you can always increase our attention. For example, yesterday we got a very important Instagram share with 80,000 followers, which got us 500 new followers. So, after that, we had like 20 more contributions. So if you have some way to increase our reach, you're very welcome to use that. But we're also looking into SEO, how to find our website more quickly. So if you have made um, good experiences, please do fill in our polls. So, yeah, participate and that will help us. So just get in touch with you, right? Yeah. All right. How many people are working in your collective? And you mentioned working groups. How many of those do you have and on which topics? We're about 12 people at the moment, but it varies greatly depending on our resources, because of course this is all voluntary work, which we do in addition to our actual jobs. So, yeah, we have different working groups, for example, on PR, texting, legal, website issues, legal issues, yeah, you said that, the polls, we all do evaluations, blog, writing, glossaries, yeah, there's always something to do. So, I think our structure can be maintained as long as we don't get too big because we have very close and tight-knit collaboration and, of course, we're dealing with confidential data. So, it's very important that we know who we're working with. Oh, yeah, and translation is a big topic. We're working on translation at the moment. English is the first uh, language we're working with. So, one last question. I think we still have five minutes left. Uh, you can still post your questions. So, one question. What is the feedback you got so far? 
Das Feedback ist eigentlich, ähm, also es gibt natürlich kritisches Feedback. Of course, so, there's some critical feedback, so, which we mentioned in the panel. Da habt ihr was irgendwie vielleicht noch nicht so im Detail abgebildet, wie es nötig wäre. Sometimes we were criticized that we didn't have enough coverage of certain topics and experiences that weren't included and since we've been online we've getting we've been getting into it more and more and we've reached a larger community and we've gotten positive feedback from people who haven't been to a gynecological office for a long time and now um, finally dare to go back because of us and that is very good and also sometimes we when we get negative feedback about certain practitioners we always make a collective decision on how to proceed maybe one feedback that was a bit scary to me actually from gynecologists we developed a process on the abortion topic getting in touch about that and there's a tendency for some doctors offices who don't want to be mentioned which i think is because of a societal tendency to suppress uh, this topic that uh, some practices don't want to get public with that Did you get anti-feminist feedback? I haven't seen any, but of course we are aware that that is a risk if you are, because people are searching the net for certain content and that is a threat that we um, are aware of, but I haven't, I didn't remember any emails or DMs from that corner. Well, there was a transphobic comment on Twitter, but that was more played, reflected through us to a different account or something. But I think apart from that, it went pretty well. So we've been lucky so far, fingers crossed. Um, but of course, one does the work, as Lisa has said, in the knowledge, in, in that awareness. Yes, of course, that is nice to hear, and I am keeping my fingers crossed that it should continue. One last question I have. Maybe there will be others forthcoming. How is it with translating this uh, page into simple language? Have you thought about that? Uh, uh, Christina, maybe you can talk about this. Um, Yes, we had this, we were aware of this need from the start, but we didn't want to do it in a way that one of us will now sit down and do it, all of that, but we wanted to find someone who could really support us well in that and really know, would really know what that means to have uh, an offering in simple language because, of course, this should be something to enrich our offering and not just a side track. So, if someone is watching that can translate into a simple, lang simple language, it would be a great feedback to hear from you. We cannot, of course, offer any jobs but we would gladly um, have someone join that collective who would work with on us with us on that. So yes, thank you for the talk. And there'll be a big blue button room that you can use to talk more. The link to that is in the at the bottom of the question pad. But one last question for me: How? What is the best way to reach you after this day is over? Um, or if I watch the recording of this talk, how can I get in touch? Well, the best thing I would have said is email at contact, contact at information.de. And of course, you can use all the other channels, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook a little. You, don't, you can't reach us too well on Facebook, Insta and Twitter. That is where we respond.
quickly. And also, quite importantly, you can email us with encryption too. Ja, fantastisch. Dann vielen herzlichen Dank. Fantastic. Thank you very much for giving us this information. Thank you for watching, taking part, asking questions maybe, and maybe for your continued discussions in Big Blue Boston. So this was the uh, presentation of information. Thank you. And thank you.